Hello, it is Thursday, December 7th, 2023. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It's a Thursday crossword, which means we're in for some sort of interesting or intricate theme. And I was just looking at the Daily Solve Discord chat server, and it seems as though people are really enjoying today's puzzle. People are very good about spoilers there, by the way, so they use the spoiler tag. So I've not been not been told anything about the theme, but people seem to enjoy it. So I'm looking forward to that. And this uh, likely enjoyable edition of The Daily Solve has been brought to us by William Arundel, Adam and Annette Noble, Emma Smith, and as always, the indomitable Shoalmaster and the incredible Horan family. So thank you so much to the five of them. They are, of course, benefactors of the Daily Self Patreon campaign, which means they support this channel, sustain this series, keep this all going. I'm very grateful uh, to them. So thank you to them. Thank you to everybody who's a patron at any level. And if you'd like to consider becoming one, you can head over to patreon.com slash daily solve or click the link in the description field underneath the video where um, you can find all the bonus videos available to patrons, of course, and the official mug for benefactors. So uh, thanks again to all those people. Thanks if you've Subscribe to the channel on YouTube, like the videos, commented on them. Those things are all uh, helpful. And I'm going to read some comments from yesterday's puzzle today. I'm finally going to try and get back into doing that more frequently than I have been recently. Uh, and then finally, what else? Is there anything else? Oh, there is that Daily Solve Discord chat server, which I mentioned at the front. And there's a um, there's a link in the description field to that as well. All right, let's get on to the puzzle. This is a Thursday construction by Rebecca Goldstein, who's constructed around a dozen puzzles for the New York Times, and it was edited, as always, by Will Shorts. So let's start solving, see how this goes. Along with Big Bird, roll for puppeteer Carol Spinney on Sesame Street. I don't know who else this puppeteer would have played on Sesame Street, so we'll have to keep going. Fall Fruit. I don't know, there are probably, probably a number of options. Apples or something like that? Obviously that doesn't fit. Blank Piece. Puff piece, or I'm trying to think what would fit in four letters specifically. I don't know. Noodle, e.g. Could be a food item, could be your brain, could be something else. I was just wondering if getting that would allow me to help with, with would allow me to get peace, but not yet. Rental contract could be a lease. There we go. I think that's probably right. So then let's look at that, at this then. Less green in a way, older. So if something's green, it's young. Um, either literally or metaphorically, depending on if you're talking about, say, a person or certain fruits, actually, speaking of fall fruits. Toodaloo could be Sia, maybe, with that E there in five letters. These look okay so far. Alternative to a latte or flat white, a cappuccino, which is my, my favorite coffee drink. And then, oh, Oscar, Oscar the Grouch must have also been played by Carol Spinney. There we go on Sesame Street. Good. Talmudic honorific. Uh, Reb. So this is, you know, a, a honorific title applied to, um, you know, people in a, in a Jewish, particular Jewish community, for instance. Uh, so there we go. Not, uh, does not mean rabbi. EMT's apparatus informally. Oh, maybe this is wrong. I guess this is wrong. It'll be cafe something. Because this is a defib, a defibrillator would be the EMT's apparatus informally. So, oh, cafe mocha maybe. Okay, there we go. So we did not get my, didn't get my preferred espresso drink into the, into the grid, but that's okay. Sears are eyes; they literally see. So slightly punny there, hence the question mark. And to repeat, as I said, I'll repeat it. A certain freestyle competition is. I don't know freestyle. Not sure. Ones who could, oh, maybe Mocha is also wrong. Because <laughs> this was a bit suspicious, but then now 26 across is also completely incorrect. What is this? Cafe? It's obviously not a cafe latte. I don't know. I mean, I'll, it, you know, we'll see it when we see it. But ones who couldn't be further from the truth, I assume this is liars. That's why I, the other reason I thought Cafe Mocha was wrong. Um, because if you know, if you're far from the truth, you're you're lying about it. Toodaloo could be ta-ta, goodbye. And there was no other choice. I had to. Okay. Kinda-ish a bit. Survivor dwelling. You know, I've never actually seen Survivor, but I assume that they, they dwell in huts, I guess, on an island. Designer Anna. Oh, Anna. Is it Sui with an I? I'm fairly certain I've seen that name before. So what is this? Oh, Cafe, o Cafe Olay. That doesn't actually fit, but... We could be doing a rebus here. 
So if, if you don't know, a rebus, it, because this is clearly cafe au lait, and let's just look at this. Yes, URL, URL opening would be HTTP hypertext transfer protocol. So uh, internet links obviously often start that way. And then certain freestyle competition. I don't know. Anyway, sorry, let me get back to what I was saying. So the Rebus function in, your, in a New York Times crossword, I, I, I'm fairly certain every time this has come up in a puzzle on this series, there's always at least someone in the comments who's surprised that this exists. And I don't blame you because how would you guess such a thing? So uh, basically, um, if we wanted to, this doesn't look right in the across, but if we wanted to put AU in a single cell, we could enable the Rebus mode, type it in, and then exit Rebus mode, and we'll be back to normal. Um, and why might you do that? Because uh, sometimes a thematic element of a puzzle requires that in order to fulfill some kind of often visual pun or some reference that's being made elsewhere in the puzzle. And uh, you just have to infer when that is an appropriate entry. And I haven't quite gotten to that point, I don't think. To arrive nonchalantly, nonchalantly would be to stroll stroll in or stroll up. I can see either of those being being correct, so let's move on for now. Workplace, e.g. A workplace, not a suite, what is this? Uh, I'm not sure. Dangers, perils, maybe? Okay, oh, a rap battle is a certain freestyle competition. So, oh, right, okay. <laughs> So this is um, this is a sort of alchemical theme, I think. We're going to perform alchemy in this grid, at least, or at least in this cell. There might be something else going on elsewhere in the grid, but I bet I bet it'll be this throughout. Uh, Cafe Ole, A U is the chemical symbol for gold, and in rap battle, um, P B is the chemical symbol for lead. And famously, alchemy purported to be able to turn lead into gold. So I think we would actually put it maybe in this order. So, uh, rap pow atle or cafe baule, uh, but now of course that's not what they are. Uh, there we have it. Those are. I think that may well be how the theme works in this in this grid. So let's keep an eye out for other suspicious spots and see if we can put in a little bit of alchemy there as well. Oh, oh a workplace is a site, as in a construction site, a building site. Okay, grilled corn as a Mexican street food, elote, which I have <laughs> consumed from. A street truck, but also made, and it's very nice. Fall fruit. Oh, a pear, I suppose. There we go. Plant with teeth. What kind of plants have teeth? Plant with teeth. Question. Or sorry, quotation marks. So teeth is being used in maybe a slightly punny way. I don't know. Can't think offhand. Sorry about that. Actress Fanning of the Great. Is it L? I'm actually not trying to pronounce it. Is it Ellie or L? Fanning? Something like that. Um, and then plant with teeth. Oh, is it aloe? Right, okay, because it's got little sort of spiky bits. I guess that's what that means. Okay, well, anyway, it's the official medicinal plant of the New York Times crossword, aloe. There we go. Keep a, look, keep a look out for that. If it's a plant, maybe just think of that immediately, just in case, which I should have done, but didn't this time. One may cry foul, a ref, a referee uh, overseeing a match. And then alfresco drinking establishment. So alfresco used to refer to eating outdoors. Uh, and these would be roof, a roof garden, a roof bar, a roof restaurant, a roof terrace, a roof, a roof top. I don't think anything's going to fit after top, roof top. I don't know. For some reason, I can't think what this is. Play group, a cast, the performers in a play. So roof, I don't know, sorry. Blank piece, let's see, where Henrik Ibsen is buried. All right, is he buried in Oslo? I mean, that seems like the most likely places you often get sort of towering cultural figures buried in there, in the you know, capital of the country. Let's see, Noodle EG. I'm not sure Oslo's correct, but let's see if we can figure this out. Patriotic World Cup chant. Right. Okay, this will be another Rebus thing, because this could be USA, USA. So, I don't know. Oh, no, no, because the AU would go here. Yes, okay, great. So, US, yeah, it'd be USAU, 
And then, well, ah, that explains why I couldn't get the roof thing. Should have thought about that. So roof, uh, this is the PB one. Roof top bar. Maybe this isn't cast. Because this could be rooftop bar with that P and B. So play group. Um, uh, tots, maybe? As in children playing together? Maybe? Actress Fisher of eighth grade. Um, hmm, do I know this name? I don't, it doesn't immediately ring a bell. I'm not sure. Let's keep looking. Noodle EG. I don't know. Swing wildly and helplessly. Flail, to flail around is to do that. Prow's position would be, what, at the, the fore of the boat? Is that, is that proper terminology? I'm doubting myself about that. What, what does that mean? Sorry. It's obviously a position on a boat. Let's see. What about this? Kind of error or attraction? Oh, fatal attraction. Maybe this is, I'm still wrong about this. Fatal attraction or fatal error as well. Okay. So play group, a team, right? Okay. Finally figured it out. We're on what my third version of what play could be. In this case, play a game or, you know, participate in a sporting match, which a, a ref might oversee. So there we go. There we go. Elsie Fisher, this must be then. Sounds vaguely familiar, but not, not certain. But the crosses make it likely. Prowse position. Okay, is it is it the four? And then blank piece. I can't see what that is. What about this noodle, e.g.? Pool toy? Yeah, pool toy. Oh, wait a second. Puff piece was my very first, was my first and only guess before I had any crosses. How did that... <laughs> How did I then not immediately remember it and come back to it later? That's bizarre. Anyway, ride that might have a hot tub, a limo, limousine, I suppose might have a hot tub in it. That would be uh, something. Quality by which, by which mattresses are classified. Quality. Fineness? I don't, I'm not sure. According to, per instructions, according to instructions. Harper, who wrote Ghost Set a Watchman, Harper Lee, certainly more famous for um, uh, oh, the Ad book with Atticus Finch and Scott, what's it called? To Kill a Mockingbird, so, sorry. <laughs> anyway, I just said she's more famous for it, and then I couldn't think of the name of the book. That was strange. Uh, pseudoscientific process hinted at by four squares in this puzzle. Yes, okay, it is indeed alchemy. We are turning lead into gold. We've done it twice, well, there'll be two more, presumably, roughly in the other two corners of the grid. Okay, word with clean or clear, clear cut or clean cut. There we go. Illumination unit is a is it a is it a LUD? Code for Sky Harbor Airport. Oh, I don't know. I think that's Phoenix, Arizona, PHX. Oh, Lux. That sounds better. Lux for light. Yes. Okay, there we go. That sounds much more correct. So this is Phoenix Airport, who's Airport code must be PHX. And then, and uh, I think I've <laughs> never really been to Phoenix, but I've, I've flown through the airport a few times. Arrive nonchalantly. All oh, right, I thought this was stroll in or stroll up. I don't know which. To radiate something would be to emit it, to sort of send it out. And then wool wear for winter would be a pea coat, maybe? It's a particular garment. It's a nice alliteration in there. Wool wear for winter. Waterfall effect could be a mist. Yeah, waterfalls produce mist in the air. And then a reputation ruiner is a, not a smear, a what? Oh, well, stroll in is now here rather than stroll up. So there we go. Reputation ruiner, stain on one's reputation. Wheel part could be the spoke of a wheel. Caterer's container could be, could be, no, not trays. It's not plural. A T. Oh, 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 right. It's going to be another one of these tea urn. Yes, there we go. A, U, but we're going to put PB first. So T, urn. There we go. Very good. And that'll help us with this. Well, let's, let's do this quickly first. Blueprint bits are specs, specifications on a building blueprint, for instance. To locate something is to spot it, maybe. Here we have vegetables, sometimes called ladies' fingers, are okra. And finally, campsite would be a tent. You could see, uh, this is campsite as in something you see rather than a place you stay. So you could see a tent there. Okay, so here we have soda containers in the Midwest are pop bottles. There we go. Yes, soda referred to as pop in many parts of the Midwest. 
first of the US, first prime could be, oh, is the number two. So in the series of prime numbers, two is the first prime number. And the only even one. Uh, loomed could be a question mark. Oh, right. So it doesn't mean loomed as in was impending. It means, you know, an inevitable thing. It means loomed as in wove, you know, on a loom. You used a loom. You wove uh, fabric or, or wool or whatever. Plunk down is to plop down, I guess. And the parenthetical just means we're going to apply the down both to the clue, but also the answer. So plunk down, plop down. Available, if you're available, you're open, you're free. Pet problem, question mark. Um, I'm not sure. Pet question mark, right? What is this? Oh, a pet peeve, right? You could say, this is one of my pet peeves. It's one of my sort of chronic but relatively small scale problems. All right, Dr. Blank Honeydew, Muppet partner of Beaker, right? I can think of this character. I, I can think of both of these characters in my head, but I don't know that I know the actual name. Oh, I just can't, I, I'm not sure. I can't think. Authors, uh, so this could be a verb. I guess you could metaphorically use it as a noun, but if you author something, you pen it. So that's what's going on there. Pens, and then undergarment providing a lift. A, okay, I think this is probably going to be another, um, another rebus. Sorry. So, boy, I really need to, <laughs> I have to drink some water after this. Um, my throat's been dry this whole time. Apologies if that's coming through. Anyway, so where was I? Push. Yes, here it is. PB, push up bra, and then we'll put the AU in there as well. Oops. And then RA. Is that right? I think that is right. For some reason, I struggle to immediately parse these well. So Dr. O, is it Bunsen Honeydew? Is that because Bunsen Burner and Beaker, those are both sort of laboratory equipment, maybe? If Beale Street Could Talk is a James Bond, uh, James, Bond James Baldwin novel that was adapted to film a few years ago, and uh, which I enjoyed. And then Quality by Which Mattresses, Mattresses, I'm losing it. Quality by which mattresses are classified. Firmness, not fineness. Why didn't I think of firmness? There we go. This looks like the word yeah, and the clue is mm hmm So yeah, it is. Yeah. Made out. So in a slightly quaint way, you could say people made out in the romantic sense. They necked. I think I only know from sort of older television, really. Group as of stars could be a star cluster. And Persian suffix meaning land, stan. I believe, which you know is why it's used in a number of different country names uh, and some political entities that are not countries. Uh, complete stranger in slang, a rando. There we go. That's a fairly modern term, I think, in the last few decades anyway. Uh, agita is anger. There we go. Um, ire. It, someone bitten sharply was stung, maybe, or I think that's I think that's right. You could, you know, call a really sharp bite a sting, I suppose. And then Yellow Jackets Network for short. Um, what network would this be? Is it Showtime, maybe? That has starts with an S and has a sort of shortened version in three letters, which is S-H-O. I'm not sure that's the case, but let's look at the crosses. Giraffe Gatherings. Oh, right. This isn't, this isn't anger. It's angst. Sorry about that. And um, where did that come up? Oh, it came up in the most recent listener crossword. Never mind. I was thinking it was another New York Times crossword. No, sorry. Okay. Anyway, giraffe gatherings are herds, right? Which is why I changed this. And then, okay, maybe I was wrong or not, you could say. And then that does confirm SHO for the Yellow Jackets Network. And then to reverse course is to make a U-turn. Yes, there we go. There we go. Make a U-turn using our gold AU down there. Organization that is often referred to by just its first letter, the YMCA, which is a recreational and, you know, community space often referred to as the Y. Subject of the classic photo, uh, Guerrero, Guerrero Heroico, um, Che Guevara. There we go. Okay. And I, I really apologize for the just completely abysmal pronunciation there. I apologize. Assistance could be aid, and then poke bowl protein could be ahi, as in uh, ahi tuna, uh, served in a, in a poke bowl. And then, no, do not have it all right. Apologies to all of you who have been 
waiting for me to notice whatever mistake I made. The problem with this kind of thing is that you never know with a rebus puzzle if your mistake is the um, is yours or if you just didn't put answers in the grid the way they expect you to. Um, oh, this one didn't go from this one I put in the wrong order. Maybe maybe that's the problem. PB to AU. No, okay. I thought that would be too easy. <laughs> I don't even know if this is the way it's be, it needs to be done. Maybe if I just put, sorry, I'm going to try other ways of putting, yeah, I know. I'm going to try other ways of putting these in before I go through the entire grid. Oops. Yeah, it's going to tell me every single time. Oh, it didn't tell me that time. Did it? And then, oh, that was it. I find that really... <laughs> I find this kind of thing very obnoxious. I don't, because, you know, I put in PBAU, it didn't take it. I then had to put in just PB, but then it replaced it with PBAU. I mean, I didn't put the slash in there, but I don't think there's any reason it should be obvious to somebody solving a puzzle that they specifically need to delineate these with a slash as opposed to, I don't know, literally anything else, a space or a dash, or I don't know, a colon or a little arrow that you make with a you know, with characters on the keyboard. I don't know. I always find this very frustrating. I think they should really proactively think about every possible way someone might reasonably enter this if they do understand the theme, right? I mean, I don't mean ex expect, except just literally anything at all, but anything that a reasonable, per reasonable person could think of in advance and think, well, someone might put this in and that would demonstrate understanding. Therefore, it should be accepted. Anyway, glad I didn't have to go through the whole puzzle looking for a mistake. Uh, just had to correct these four cells. And that is the kind of thing that actually you also need to be on the lookout for with the Rebus puzzle. I find this even more devious because at least the Rebus puzzle makes internal sense relative to the theme, whereas the way that you specifically need to enter them into a crossword, there's no way to infer that from the minds of the, the people who, enter, who entered the puzzle, except that I guess I have seen the slash in Rebus puzzles before. If I, I was going to try deleting it and yeah, it doesn't matter. Anyway... <laughs> There we go. That was the Thursday crossword, and I did really enjoy it. I, I found it not significantly more difficult than other puzzles this week, I don't think. Uh, but that said, a lot of that will probably be because I'm so accustomed to expecting rebuses, or at least allowing for the possibility of a rebus on a Thursday in particular. So that would have made the puzzle easier. And if you weren't familiar with that, I would think this to be completely baffling. Um, but let me know how you fared. I was curious to know. Uh, in the comments or the discord and now let's for the first time in a while let's discuss some clues from yesterday's puzzle and a few people commented on some elements of the theme that i missed yesterday so yesterday's puzzle had those two big h's illustrated in the grid and every single clue began with the letter h and uh let's see uh kerouac mcmichael writes on the theme i think you missed some core answers that are related to the theme heavy hand hick hop Hothead, high horse, hat hair, and ham hock. All two H words answers. I completely didn't pick up on that. So thank you for pointing it out. And uh, yes, uh, Mart uh, Martimio Bao adds a similar comment saying, uh, all the theme involved double H's in all theme answers and the lack of H in any other answers. Wow, okay, I did not pick up on, th on that bit or maybe I skimmed over it when I was collecting these comments, but uh, very impressive. So there were sort of still theme answers, I suppose. I just wasn't attuned to them, but I, they were presumably, you know, mirroring each other in the grid. Uh, let's see. Stephen Giblin uh, confirms that um, Sekula Neal's position with the Miami Heat was indeed center, as mentioned in the clue. B. Taylor from Mayberry was Aunt B, who was the aunt of Sheriff Andy Taylor, who in turn was the father of the Ron Howard character, Opie Taylor. They all lived in the town of Mayberry. So there we go. That explains that. And any profit explains Evo, the fighting game tournament mentioned in yesterday's puzzle, is indeed short for Evolution. The full name is the Evolution Championship Series. It's still going and still the biggest fighting game tourney of the year. So thank you for that uh, explanation. And then finally, <laughs> George says, I thought Bart Starr was famous enough to be even known by non-football fans, signed Green Bay fan. I'm sorry, I would never, you're not going to lose any money um, betting against my sports knowledge. So uh, I'm sorry for, for not having that knowledge in my head, but um, 
So it goes. All right. Well, there we have it. That was the Thursday crossword, the Thursday puzzle. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll be back tomorrow for another themeless crossword, the Friday edition. Do join me then. But until that point, please do have an excellent remainder of your Thursday. Take care. Mm -hmm.